Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone. I'm teacher Fikri and I'm going to present on ADHD, learning disabilities and developmental coordination disorder. So at the end of the presentation, I would like to achieve these four targets, which is the first thing is what is ADHD, what is learning disabilities, types of learning disabilities, and what is developmental coordination disorder. So let's begin. ADHD uh, is the short term for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which is regarded as the most common neurobehavioral disorder, where we still use DSM-4TR from the uh, DSM books as reference towards diagnose uh, people or children specifically uh, in terms of ADHD, where it exhibits inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity, where inattention towards details given, towards instructions, or to listen to instruction actively, and so on. And do you know that there are estimated 3% and 5% of prevalence uh, from school age that diagnosed with ADHD? And it is most likely three times more towards boys rather than girls, which is a bit, it's a, it's a new thing that we need to understand, which is the the data given shows that it's more it most likely happened to a boy rather than girl. But that doesn't mean that the girl doesn't exhibit or that cannot be diagnosed as ADHD. So let's talk about theories. There are tons of theories that explains the existence of ADHD from different perspectives, such as etiology, neural imaging, heredity, and cognitive. Let's first start with etiology, where there are rumors that say that food additive and amount of sugar intakes causes ADHD, which is proven by National Institutes of Health, where this is this is considered false false evidence, where it is insufficient data to prove, uh, to prove as accurate, even though there are some children who diagnose with ADHD do do take um, a high amount of sugar intakes and also additive towards food. Now, the second theory is neural imaging, which is there's a decreased brain activity at the frontal parietal lobes. But at, uh, even though we can, they have detected the decrease of brain activity in that area, but the reason why it happens remains clueless. Next is heredity, where heredity the ability is possible among siblings with children diagnosed with ADHD in comparison to siblings with children that doesn't diagnose with ADHD, which means that it can happen in terms of heredity. And cognitive, uh, more towards cognitive impair impairment, where Buckley suggested that symptoms of ADHD may underlie from response inhibition, or we can say that the root of the problem comes from response inhi inhibition that it has something to do with orbital frontal cortex and how it works towards respond. And this is how it explains the existence of ADHD. Now let's talk about learning disabilities. Where learning disabilities are not often not associated with specific neurologic insults, such as cerebral palsy, that is considered neurologic insults, where neurologic the, the definition of neurologic insults comes from a sudden disruptance towards brain flow, uh, blood flow in the brain, which is considered neurologic insults. And where learning disability gravitated towards neurologic problems such as ADHD, as we have explained before, specific LD, which is short terms for learning disabilities, where it includes auditory processing, language disabilities, and perceptual impairment. Now, there are nine types of learning disabilities that I would like to talk about, which is the first one is disorders of motor function, education disorder, disorder of attention and concentration, disorder of thinking and memory, problems of speech and communication, auditory difficulties, sensory integrative and perceptual disorder, psychosocial problem, uh, and then specific learning difficulties that accompany with learning disabilities. So let's begin. 
The first one is disorder of motor function, where it can range from clumsiness to poor performance in motor skills such as fine motor skill and gross motor skills. And to these uh, children may appear as hyperactive or we call it restlessness or hypoactive lethargic where we can see the disorder of motor function. The next one is educational disorder where it can occur in one or more academic subjects. And this focuses towards educational skills such as copying words from the blackboard, or coloring, or even writing notes, or even the writing the cursive words, which is considered a uh, difficulty towards them. Next is disorder of attention and concentration, which are uh, which is short attention span, restlessness, and impulsivity. Impulsivity because if short attention span happens, that it would cause learning disability when they can't even even stay in the class for maybe let's say the class has forty minutes. They can't even stay even one quarter uh, a quarter of the time, maybe ten minutes, and they just poof and gone, not focusing through the class. And the next is disorder of uh, thinking and memory, which is difficulty with abstract reasoning, concept formation, and short-term and long-term memory. For example, abstract reasoning may be mathematical, mathematical and remind uh, mathematical concepts such as uh, what does, how does, uh, uh, how does subtraction works, how does addition works, multiplication and division works. Next is problems of speech and communication, which is shifting topic of conversation. They have problem when it comes to when conversation, topic of conversation shifting. So they tend to take time or delay to, to catch up with the conversation or they have uh, delay in terms of small tasks or sequencing of words. For example, I want to eat, they say I do want to eat or I eat one. And the next is auditory difficulties where they have difficulties in terms of remembering oral direction such as, oh, let's go to the left. So they have difficulties on processing the words, how does left works? And then sound out words such as, how does chicken sounds like? So it's a chicken sounds like, or cow sounds like. So they can't sound it out or blend the sounds into words and then remembering sequencing of words. And then sensory integrative and perceptual disorder, which is laterality and directionality concept that requires visual perception skills. For example, if you want to solve nine pieces of puzzles, right? We need to remember the directionality and the laterality of the picture or the visual given. Uh, whenever we rotate a bit, can we remember the, the visual perception of the picture? And if we have disabilities or difficulty to that, it may, it may cause us children to feel frustrated to complete the task. And the next is psychosocial problems, which is temper tantrums or antisocial behavior where they don't want to, they don't want to talk with uh, children among their ages. They just solitary play, for example. Problems with self concept, which is understanding themselves and how does they work in this world. And then last but not least is specific learning difficulties that accompany the learning disabilities such as specific reading disabilities where it does happen more frequently. For example, reading disability to read, I love to eat chicken. They might have delay or even have difficulties to even reading the sequencing and all that, I eat one chicken and so on and so on. Okay. Now, let's talk about developmental coordination disorder, often called as, <coughs> often called as clumsy child syndrome. Or, but that, that, that's because they are clumsy doesn't mean that they are developmental coordination disorder because this disorder focuses on impairment in motor coordination, like, for example, fine motor skill and gross motor skill. If they have impairment in motor coordination, they can't even do tasks at school such as writing, kicking ball, and so on and so on. And because of that, they 
they would build this frustration towards uh, to complete the task and they thought that they can't even do it and they themselves become disruptive. But at the end of the day, each of the disorders that I talk about has their own solution. For example, developmental cognition disorder, even though there are no specific uh, specific remedy, but they, they give suggestions towards individualized therapy where they can help to increase uh, sensory input and so on, sensory processing, because this is what mostly important to, to, to capture input and then to release the output. And so does ADHD and also learning disabilities where most of them need help in terms of sensory processing. And thank you.